Yo guys, welcome back to this tech tip series. This video we're going to be taking a look at one of my favorite tools for coming up with sequences and rhythms, and that's Euclidean sequences. Let's jump in and take a look at how they work. Okay, let's check these out. As I said, Euclidean sequences are amongst my favorite tools when it comes to sequencing for generating interesting ideas uh, and movement and rhythms. Um, they're a ton of fun uh, and you get sort of quite immediate results by just tweaking a few of the parameters. Uh, so uh, I use Falcon a lot because it's, uh, it's Euclidean sequencer. You have a percussion one and a tonal one as well. They're incredibly versatile. Um, there's a lot you can do with them. Uh, there are other options as well. If you check out stuff from um, Hornet plugins, I believe a ride generator will uh, work quite nicely with percussion stuff as well. And we're going to take a look at Voltage Modular, uh, a different way for using Euclidean sequences as well. Um, but let's first check this out. I've got just a, a kind of pluck patch loaded up from uh, one of the contact uh, from Falcon um, expansions. <laughs> That's the sound we're working with. So we're gonna add a sequencer now to start generating some melodies for the sound. Um, now I'm gonna show you the tonal sequencer. The drum sequencer works in very much the same way. Uh, it just triggers different drum sounds, whereas the tonal one is gonna be triggering different notes in a chord, which we're gonna set up. So let's jump to the uh, program section. We're gonna add a event and then script processor and run down to sequencing. We'll grab the Euclidean tonal sequencer and you'll get this interface pop up. So this is a great way to just show you how Euclidean sequencing works. It's essentially an algorithm that will take an amount of steps so you can set the, uh, the step length, uh, so in this case up to 16, and then the amount of hits. So again, it's the same kind of concept as polyrhythms. Um, However, this is not you sequencing the hits yourself. It's an algorithm that will determine where the hits go for you. And what the algorithm does is as you reduce the amount of hits, it will try to distribute the hits as evenly as possible. So if you see, if you go down to sort of, uh, let's go to eighth, um, eight steps out of 16, that's gonna every second note, it's gonna play a note for you. So let's just take that out as opposed to 16 out of 16. Now where it gets more interesting is when you start using um, uneven numbers that aren't divisible into 16. So let's go with nine, for example, and you'll see the algorithm will kind of try to get them as even as possible, but you'll have these double notes at some points. So you can generate rhythms in that way. Now where it gets even more interesting is when you can start changing up other parameters even further, uh, you have offset, which would be the start time. So generally these uh, Euclidean sequences start here and you can offset them to have them start in different areas. You can rotate this around. And you also have the ratio, which will allow you to either sort of half the time or double the time, make it speed up, slow down, etc. in relation to other ones. We can check that out quickly if we do a ratio of two, for example. Or a half. And back to one. And that's according to the 16 resolution there. Uh, you can obviously slow these down as well but that will globally slow these down. It's changing the ratio here will slow down just the center sequence. Now let's uh, let's grab a key that we're gonna work in. Um, we're gonna work in, let's say D and we'll grab a harmonic minor. And let's start enabling our additional sequences. So now each one of these is a Euclidean sequence in its own right. We'll enable this and this degree is essentially the note selection. So this will take the second degree or the second note out of the um, harmonic minus scale of D that we're working in now. So let's um, let's back off on these quickly. We'll leave this at 16 and let's grab a different setting. We'll work, let's say five and let's go with three with this one and see what we get. And let's bring in some more. We'll work with sparse settings at first, let's do seven. 
we can also bring in polyrhythms here by changing the number, the total number of steps. So we'll set this to 13 perhaps. And you can see all of these starting in the beginning now on the same note. So we want to kind of offset them slightly as well. We'll offset this one to one. We'll do that one to two, maybe three. So let's check that out now. So there you have it. You've got all these sequences playing and they're, they're playing rhythmically uh, and looping all the time, but they kind of in relation to each other, all very much off, you know, kind of um, very interesting kind of textures and, uh, and rhythms that you get from these. And all due to this algorithm that's basically just distributing the notes uh, per the um, parameters that you set for it. Uh, let's change these up a little bit more. And let's actually introduce some longer times for some of these as well. So we'll go with, we'll double up some of these to slow them down. And take a listen now. I'm going to want to offset these two as well slightly so they're not starting in the same spot. So we'll offset these by three. Maybe this one by two. And let's take a listen now. I can play around with these for hours, just tweaking these parameters. You come up with so many sort of like happy little accidents, you'll find a, a, a sequence that just works really, really well. And none of this is actually, you, you know, coming out of my ideas, it's just generated and, so, and you keep generating, generating, generating until you find something that works for you. And uh, yeah, it's really organic way of kind of coming up with um, melodies that you normally wouldn't at all. So another way that I really like employing these Euclidean sequences is to control um, data with it. And I'm going to show you a little patch inside of Voltage Modular, which is my favorite um, VST modular. I love this, uh, this software. Um, so I put up a very simple little patch here, which I'm just going to walk you through quickly. Um, we're not going to worry too much about this, but uh, basically th this is just the sync uh, to the DIW. Uh, I'm using an arpeggiator module so that we can play an arpeggiator pattern from this. And it's just, yeah, that's muted. And let's uh, just hit run. So you can see our Euclidean sequencer that we have here. When we push start, that's going to start running this. And very much the same way that we did with Falcon, you have triggers. Uh, so this currently is set to eight triggers in 16th notes. So every second note, it's going to be playing one. But instead of this triggering notes, what I've done is use the triggers from the Euclidean dual, and I've run them into an envelope. So this envelope is going to be triggered every time one of these little no uh, notes lights up. And that in turn is going to route the control data from the envelope and modulate, in this case, it's going to modulate the filter cutoff. And this one uh, I'm running to the amp. So currently I have the amplifier uh, set up to this uh, ADSR over here, but there's an additional amp control that will bring in sort of accented volume on that as well. So I'm going to play this and just show you what we come up with and uh, how these, uh, how the CV data can actually rhythmically change the sound that we have. Okay, so let's bring in the Euclidean sequences. So you can hear that is the first Euclidean sequence and now basically modulating the filter cutoff, which is over here. And let's bring in some of the accents. And they're sounding pretty dull now, but let's start changing up the triggers. And 
And it's generating nice, interesting control data for us. And you can take this a step further as well with mo voltage modular and actually modulate um, some of the parameters from the Euclidean dual itself. So we can have the offset uh, being shifted via CV. And let's slow this one down. And you can see basically the LFO now rotating our uh, start points for the Euclidean sequencer. So we play that back now again, you'll hear the cutoff filters, um, sequences changing all the time. And then you have it, just another interesting way to utilize these uh, Euclidean sequences. A lot of fun, really cool way to generate new ideas uh, for your sounds. Cool, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll catch you in the next tech tip. Cheers. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.